Hello guys, what's up? It's D Michael M here in 1987. How are you guys doing? Um so today I'm 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 doing uh yep, you can read the title of this video. A spoiler discussion while well, talk about Fantastic Four. Yes, the film that is being critically attacked right now. But I think personally it's a film that we should try to I'm I'm gonna try to defend here for my personal reasons why. Um why I believe it should be defended, and it should not be critically said as a piece of crap, like a lot of reviewers out there. Should. I've been reading every single, I've been watching every single YouTube video. Like everyone, how everyone thinks about this film, they all are saying it's bad. Like not every single one of them, but I, there's like a few that support the film or trying to defend it as much as possible. But it's not that bad at all. All right, I heard itchy. Uh, it's not that bad at all, but I can understand. I don't really understand why they are really acting this way. But however, I, I'm trying to try to support it or try to help the pain not be as intense as it, you, you guys are noticing it. But I feel like right now is not the best time to help it. They should have helped this film way before even the film came out. I'm talking about during the time of production. I mean, before you even talk about this film, when you spoil the hell out of it, I'm going to talk about what I think really went wrong with this film. And I'm going to talk about it for a while. So. Here's what I think went wrong instantly is the fact that it's really the reason why this film is sc so screwed up right now is Fox's fault. It's really the, f the studio's fault for what happened to this film. Cause I read um there was a tweet uh the director Josh Trank on Twitter t uh, tweeted that a year ago he had an amazing cut of this version, amazing version of this same film that would have had critics falling in love with the film, right? Guess what he says that Fox said no to it and you'll never see it, which is a true shame, you know, cause. I did enjoy what I saw here, but I saw the potential. The setup to this film was amazing. The potential for the Fantastic Four to be a great movie, outstanding movie, fantastic even, you know? A chance for that could make this film that much even better, make it even higher of um, spectacle it could have been, you know? But Fox, the studio, just came in and took control of the film. They really, uh, how can I say it, dim, like, not dim way, but... They just took control out of the director's hand, Josh Trank. I mean, I don't know if Josh Trank is unexperienced with big budget projects, because this is like a $120 million budget, plus from his, his original film, which didn't even cost that much at all. So, he's taking a guy who did have a, unique, a lot of experience in that type of big budget blockbuster story uh, genre, you know, you try to push him into that, it's it's going to be a lot of challenges. He's going to have a lot of trouble. You need to really support the, the director with this film. I just feel like it's like it's way too late to defend it, but I'm still gonna try to anyways. I know it's just a true shame that that it's really Fox's fault. I'm I'm not I don't think it's really Josh Frank's fault. I don't I don't know the guy. I don't know how he thinks. I don't know if he's professional or not, or if he can be a problematic uh, ego. I don't think so at all. Cause the way he really does the way the potential and the vision he has for his films was a, is something that's special. You know, Chronicle for example. Look at Chronicle. Watch that film. Re um, look at every single shot. That film has a unique vision to it. You don't see that in other films. That one makes Chronicles so amazing. That's why I loved it when it came out. You know, and I I really wanted to love Fantastic Four, and I enjoyed it to a certain point, but it could have gotten so much better if he had support for his vision. It felt like I don't know if this happened or not, but I feel like no one really helped. Josh Trank with this project out at all. Like, he was on his own two feet and he needed someone to help him up and no one just did. It's just a true shame because of it. You know, because why not just help the guy? Seriously. But, you know, it's too late to say. I mean, I mean, if he didn't make a mistake, he could always just take responsibility for it. But really, it's by what he's saying in his tweets and all the articles that are talking about this week, it's, it's Sony's, it's not Sony, Fox's fault. It's Fox's fault for what's happened to this film. It's why this film was a critical disaster, and why it might even be a flop, or it might even not reach its um, predictions, a 40 to $50 million release, you know? And on its opening weekend, which is a really big thing, because this film has to do well in its opening weekend domestically, and it has to do well foreignly. foreignly. So, that's going to be a real bad drag, you know? So, that's what i got to say about it. So, alright, I'm done talking about Fox, and why this is it's late to defend it, but I'm still going to defend it anyways, right? So let's just talk about a few of the things that that is good here. So let's talk about the tone of the film. I really did like it. I mean, I mean yeah, all right, the dark tone, a lot of films are going down the dark path, you know? 
Um, Avengers Age of Ultron, Ultron had a, had a darker like theme to it than what the original Avengers had. Like Iron Man three had a darker theme to it. Um, Batman really started this dark, dark, dark themes. You know, I like that. I like these dark themes, and I feel like it really did work for this on the dark uh, tone to really amplify, but also make it more realistic. You know, it's not to make it horrifyingly disastrous and make it un. Like super fantasy, it's grounded science fiction, and I want to see that done with a superhero movie. You know, you don't really see that that often because Marvel movies they go beyond the science fiction. They go beyond being grounded. They just let loose the imagination. You know, that's why films like Ant Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, and the other Avenger movies are amazing. You know, so I like to see this tone is much more different, and that's something I don't really see that often. Uh, hopefully, like uh, I heard rumors that Doctor Strange might have that darker tone as well that this film had. Maybe try that type of movie, you know, because I really do like it. I mean, it's a film that reinvents the idea of Fantastic Four, and I really did like that. It's like, um, it's surprising to me that people aren't supporting this type of reinvention, but some people will support Man of Steel's reinvention. Two entirely different products. Two, one Marvel, one DC, right? All right, understandable. But, I mean, DC's Man of Steel got critically mixed as well. It got 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. People supporting that reinvent that, or the reinvention of that character. And I loved that film as well. I mean, I support both uh, interpretations of these uh, films. Man of Steel, I thought it was a really great uh, reinvention of the character. And I really do like this reinvention of this team, this superhero team. I really do like it. And I don't know why people are like supporting one side, but they can't support the other. In my opinion, you have to support all sides to see how it all turns out in the end. That's why I feel for superhero movies, because they are a genre that's really growing and blowing up to a maximum level of potential now. So, that is something that we're going to have to take really uh, careful uh, ideas from. You have to not judge a book by its cover. You have to open the book, read a few chapters, and see how it guides. And after a few chapters, you don't like it, you close the book. If you like the chapters, keep on reading and get to the end. That's how I see as um, the invention. I'm sorry I got out of topic, but let's just talk about the science fiction part of this film. I really did like it. The science fiction part of this film really is, um, really, like I said, grounded in science, because that's what the director and writer and producer wanted, you know, and I felt like it worked really well here. I mean, there's no freaking flying the spaceships into space and then get hit by comic rays no more, no. Um, so this is a spoiler review, uh, not a review, well, spoiler discussion. It's still 8 out of 10, it's not changing the score. Um, but I will be talking about all the spoilers, so if you have not seen the film, or you just don't care, or you're not going to watch the film at all, hear my opinion, uh, if you if you don't see it, but you're going to see it, leave right now. If you already saw it, you can stay here and watch the rest of this video. Got it? Good? Done? Okay, got it. Alright, so, I do like the science fiction part of this film a lot, because it's much more grounded and realistic. I mean, now, I mean, yes, interdimensional travel might not be the most realistic thing on Earth right now, but imagine seeing that in a few years, I mean, that could be a really cool type of thing here. I also like when they went to um, the negative zone, or the negative planet Zero, it's called Planet Zero in the film, uh, where the team gets their powers, you know, and, and it looked really cool, like um, a desolated, destroyed Earth after it got an ap apocalypse, you know, they could have gone more into that type of negative zone, but they went into it far enough, it was fine, I mean, that's one part of the science fiction that was really well done here. Um, I did like the the technology that they had for the characters and the animations of the characters overall. Animation toy game, no. Uh, but I did like the science fiction as it kept it much more. It was it, it allowed it to stay um, attached. It didn't allow it to just freak out and spread all over the place. Sorry, the camera, the screen got a little wet, caused the, the screen to mess up, and it could shut down the camera. Crazy annoying. Um, anyways, the sci-fi overall, I really did like it. It allowed it to have this much more immersive um, feel to it, so it allowed it to be much more centered. That's what I'm for. I mean, towards the ending, you see that that's not this is gigantic, yeah, gigantic lab. The, the team gets a gigantic lab where it is already science fiction technology. You don't get to see any of it, but that's why there's always a sequel. And I do want to see a sequel for this film. Um, I, I do like that. And I, I said this in the original review. That this film also has a horror type of vibe to it, and I really did like that in this film a lot. Instead of being just a normal superhero movie, it felt like more like a Frankenstein, like a horror movie uh, interpretation, you know? Like, as if, like I said before in the original, it feels like this is not no normal gift. This is not no special gift that was wrapped in a basket and tied with a note saying, thank you, here's your special present. This is more of a blown up in your face. This is not no normal gift. This is much more of an evil doing done to you by something even more powerful within. You know, so I did like that. I like how um, 
when you see Reed Richards, he's stretched on the table, his body stretched out, and his and he's in pain, and he doesn't, and he, it's hard for him to move around, and his body hurt because of it, and it all makes it have that much more horrifying feel, and the music changes as well to have that dun 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 like the horror moments, like when we hear uh, Ben when he turns into the thing, when he gets out of his like rock shell because he's stuck together, he can't move, he, when you see him. It's it's like horrifying, you know. It's done well done here, you know. It makes it feel like like something how normal people would react if they got these powers. They wouldn't say, "Oh wow, this is awesome, cool gifts." They would be scared because they don't know what to do with these powers. And that's something that I really did like with the film here, how they interpreted interpreted it. I mean, they didn't interpret it when it came to Sue because when Sue got her powers, she ended up just sleeping through it all, which is a true shame. They could have done more with the character Sue. Uh, but Johnny, we got a little part of the scene of it where. Uh, he's on fire, and he's like, he wakes up, and he starts moving around, he's like, oh, oh, and he starts freaking out, and he blows up, but well, not literally blows up, but his fire power goes so uh, extreme, it breaks the window, and it causes some damage, and it seems like he's really scared, he doesn't know what's going on, that he's just on fire, he just sees fire everywhere, and it's all well, you don't see this point of view, but imagine if you were in Johnny's shoes at that moment, the horrifying scenes of that would be amazing, well done there. Um, I did really like that a lot, like I said before. Uh, how can I say it? Um, the, like, uh, one of the best horror examples in this film is when Dr. Doom shows up, yes. Uh, Dr. Doom is in the film, like I said, and it's halfway throughout the film where, when they get, they find Dr. Doom, they bring him back to Earth, because, uh, I gotta mention that, like, when the negative, they go first go into it, the, the four, um, uh, Doom gets the worst treatment out of them all, because when they're trying to get him out, he falls, he gets stuck on a string, he's like, oh crap, and we trying to pull him up and tries to save him, except the goo, the evil, freaking, uh, gene-altering goo, gets on him, and it, it, it um, gets the seat stuck on his face, it, it gets it stuck on him, he can't get it off, and you see it, it really does change, it, it looked horrifying when I first saw it, it was like, wow, that is crazy how they did that, you know, I did like that, it, it felt hor horrifying, and you can see that, that when Doom shows up, he doesn't have that much context, but you see what happened to him and how it altered him mentally and physically. He, well, we don't get enough time to see it mentally change him, but you can make it up. You can think about it. Just imagine being stuck in the same thing that you've been wearing for a year. A year, because it jumped a year later. Um, and the best scene with Doom was when he escapes. Oh my god, that was like the best scene of the film, in my personal opinion. Because when he escapes, he starts killing everybody back, or like one side to another. He kills people. And the way they killed people in this film was really, not not gruesome, but was really intense. I did not expect the film to be actually that dark before, you know? And it's surprising, because uh, they first um, kill um, Tim Blake, and they'll say, please, uh, a government official. I didn't like him at all. I mean, I didn't like, that's not, I didn't like his performance. I didn't like the character. Because he's like this, oh, we, they, they, they're powerful and dangerous, but we could use them as governmental weapons. They're just subjects for us to use. And it felt, I didn't like him at all, and it was good to see him get killed. I thought they would kill him much more subtly, like this storm against a wall and break him and break his neck. But the way they kill him is messed up. Like, he's in a hazmat suit, and Doom just stares at him, his eyes glow. And something's happening with his body, like, his face just blows up on like the hazmat screen you see the blood and he goes like down on the screen like that it's all well done yeah, i like that and then he starts going out he starts causing destruction he starts killing people back and forth making their heads blow up too it's all cool and you don't see uh their heads blow up literally because a lot of the characters who have their heads blown has their uh, heads in helmets or in masks so you see blood on the wall when they hit the wall or when the explosion is too intense where it blows up there and you see the blood on the wall it's all intense there. i like that that was when it felt more like a horror film than anything else. That's before the third act uh, changes its tone entirely and becomes something else. Um, so the horror aspect of the film was really well done here. I did like it a lot. So let's just talk about the cast, uh, the characters, each character. I'm going to talk about Reed Richards first because he's like my favorite out of the four. Um, the Fantastic Four, of course. And um, let's just say that I like his character here. He's much more of a smart... He's a smart genius, of course. <laughs> That's who he is. And... What I like about it is that he's also a guy who seems to be smart, but it wants his matter to work. But he's also careless about the consequences of his own science, which is also type of a mad scientist type of feel. Like, he wants his matter to work, and he tries hard to do it, 
but he doesn't know what he's doing or what will happen if he does it and succeeds. What happens? He can make a black hole because in the film, when he was younger, when he said he succeeded, they say that he could have also killed the Earth by releasing a black hole that would have swallowed the Earth entirely. They say that multiple times, like say it two or three times with different characters telling him in different ways. And I didn't like that. I mean, it, it, it felt like it's telling him that he is not one to really be thinking about every single scenario. What happens in this situation? What happens in another situation? You know, he doesn't really think like that. Saying that though, I did like um, the way his powers were. And I also liked uh, there's one scene where he actually changes his face's form, which is crazy. It's almost CGI. But you see, like his body moves around, his muscles. It's crazy I'm doing this, but his body moves around, his eyebrows change, his face changes. It's all that. It all looks well done. You know, I did like it a lot. When the type of thing is, his gifts, his abilities are cool. I did like his suit design because it matters specifically to him. He has all these strings, like sling slingies. I think they're called slingies. The slings and he straps them around his limbs, like I said, so they always come back to him. His limbs always come back to him, which is a cool thing. Although they do get broken off towards the ending, so and he does get more control of his uh, gift because because there's one scene towards the finale where he fights Doom and he just Doom destroys his strings, slings, and he just falls apart literally. So he has to like come back together. He's like um. You know those strong arm toys when, in the back in the days where you pull it real hard, like two kids would pull it by one, one side and another pulls the other, they stretch out as far as possible? That's what Doc, Mr. Fantastic looked like, and I did like it a lot. Um, overall, Reed Beard and Teachers was done a well job. I did love Miles Teller's performance as well. He did a really good job with the role. Um, next I'm going to talk about is Johnny Storm. I mean, he, Johnny, Johnny Storm, he's a, he's a hothead, basically. He plays that character well. He's kind of a mechanical character. He builds stuff. He can build anything. So he was part of the project. I like how they also made him a reason for the project. Like, why was Johnny Storm even part of this in the first place? He was part of it because he can build it, and, he, and they need a guy who can be a great mechanic who can build anything. I did, um... Uh, uh, well, well, before he even becomes Human Torch, but they don't even say their names, surprisingly, uh, is that he doesn't really, like, um, see himself doing anything that really matters before, like, he becomes Human Torch. He's kind of a, a, a man without really a cause, as, and he doesn't really know what to do with his life. He just wants, because when first thing, you see him in a car race, and he crashes, he screws up, he makes a mistake, and it's uh, really, in, like, not intense, but you can see that his character could have built on, and went, but towards a film, as the film continues, he starts to see much more reason to become a mature, as he has something to do, he has meaning in his life, he says, you know, and it's, like, intense for him, like, not intense for him, but it really does make him feel like he has more use, on that. he has more potential. So, overall, I did like uh, Michael B. Jordan's performance overall, I didn't mind that he was black, like that. I don't care about the racial crap, like I said before, I don't care about it, it was all fine by me. Uh, Susan Stormblade by Kate Mara here, I thought that she was the weakest out of the four, for one reason, that the fact is, they you they didn't really make her go on the expedition, which sucked entirely, you know, because, uh, I, by the way the trailer showed us, when I, the trailer pissed me, um, didn't piss me off, but I'll talk about the trailers in a little bit after I talk about the movie, the movie the spoilers. They, she doesn't even go on the expedition, it, it, I thought she was going to go on it with them, but uh, Reed goes on it, uh, Ben goes on it, and uh, Johnny goes on it, and then Victor goes on it. Kate, um... Sue doesn't even go on. She's not even in the room when it happens, which is surprising me. Um, she's, she just stays behind because she didn't even know what's happening in the first place. So when she gets her powers, it felt like it's like a, a feedback. It was a feedback, though, and she got hit by it. That's it. I didn't like that. I felt like she could have been part of the journey, and part of that would have made her powers much more useful. I mean, that's the only problem I really did have with Susan's character is that she didn't really feel like she was part of the team at that point. Which kind of sucked, you know, because um, uh, Invisible Woman is considered one of the more powerful Marvel characters out there, you know? That's a big thing to really change how your character is um, designed, not designed, but to how the character acts and how she got her power is entirely different, you know? She kind of felt like an antisocial type of character. It's kind of weird, like before she even got her powers, then she started working with the others, and that's when they all started communicating properly. But overall, like I said before, all the performances in this film is well done here. Um, uh, next up on this list is uh, Ben Grimm, played by who was the Thing, played by Jimmy Bell. I thought he was well done here as well. I didn't think he was he was the, the weakest out of them all. He wasn't weak at all. I did like how he looked. I love how when he became the Thing, the Thing looked exactly like he came out of the comic books, and I like that. This show's not trying to be. I, I understand that it's a darker tone. But you can't really make a photorealistic version of the thing. It's not a human being. It's a freaking rock with arms, legs, and a head. That's it. 
alright? That's what it is. If you don't like how the thing looks, just deal with it, alright? Because I really like it. He looked really like he came out of the comic book. Just like how uh, Marvel is doing well with their uh, characters of the Super uh, Avengers, how they all look like they came from their comic book aspects. That's what matters the most, is how they resemble the comics, not to just not that just taking names from the comics. So, overall, I did like uh, the thing. He was much more destructive here. And I did like um, Ben's moments with Reed before he becomes a thing, you know, because he felt kind of isolated from Reed because they're two entirely different people. Reed's the smarter one out of them, too, so Ben's much more of a the muscle type of character. And when he becomes a thing, and when uh, Ben is sent to ch uh, find Reed and hunt him down because Reed escapes, um, uh, Ben, like, talks to Reed and says, Look at me, I'm not your friend, you changed me. I'm something else. That really was a powerful line. I, I didn't really expect it. I was like, I thought he would say, Look at me, I'm your friend, but not at this moment. But he, it was unexpected. Like, he says, Look at me, I'm not your friend no more. You changed me to a monster or something else that I don't like. I did like that because that's because if you were to think, you wouldn't look. You wouldn't say on your friend. You wouldn't say that because you would be lying to yourself, and everyone would notice that lie. It, you would feel like you are something that's not human, and I love that aspect. Like you know, it was really powerful. And it's like he's throwing, and when you see him beat up people and kill people, he has a like, because he goes on missions. He starts killing for the government. He starts knocking all these terrorists at the people and starts throwing tanks and shit. It's all kind of cool. I did like it. You know. Um. Next is uh. Um. To uh, Toby Kevill as Doctor Doom, he was well done. I did like the reasoning of why um, they he he was kind of the one that kind of is like one of the like him and Reed were two like let's just go do this expedition because they weren't supposed to do the expedition in the first place to do the teleportation. It was supposed to be NASA because they all thought they were gonna go and do it themselves. You know, they thought they were gonna do it as a team because they made the machines. But then the government's like, nope, we're not doing it. We want NASA to do it. You know, because the government's the government. We're gonna forget you and. Um, Doom brings up a good point about Neil Armstrong and the guy who created the Apollo 13 ships and the spaceships, which allowed them to walk on the moon. He talks about how the, the men who created it are never remembered, while the guys who walked on like Buzz Aldrin and others, they're the ones that are remembered, not the ones that put effort into making it. He doesn't want to be in that place. He doesn't want to become that person that's forgotten in history. He wants to be remembered. And I did like that. That that piece of dialogue was well done here. I did like a lot of the writing in this film. It was well done. And his transformation into Dune was all right, was was one that was well done, I believe. I, he looked good in the costume. Well, costume. It was all makeup except the CGI eyes and the CGI lights around his entire body. Excuse me. But what was I going to say? Crap, that burp took a lot of thoughts out of my head. Damn it. Shit. Uh, I did like Doom a lot. I mean, his transformation to why he became the Doom was kind of understandable because they did say that he was not really a good guy when he first started with Baxter. He was he kind of became a rebel. He started causing attacks, like he started hacking them and causing trouble. And he, and he kind of was already problematic. He was kind of an anarchist type of character before he even became Doom. So when he turns into Doom, this kind of logic is already gone. So I did like the reason why he became. The, the dangerous person he is, and he's like, we must, um, you guys are always causing self-destruction, you're always causing, you can never stop killing your planet, so you gotta kill my planet, which is the other word, he calls, uh, Negative Zone his planet, so he says, let's destroy your world, while we're at it, you know, so that's what it was really, uh, um, intense, and the reason, I did believe the reason why he became Doom, you know, I would have just called Doom, not Dr. Doom, because he ain't a doctor, alright? He's a hacker, a computer hacker, which I like. Um, because he's smart. He has to be smart in order to be smart. There's no Doom bots, which sucks, or anything like that. No Doom, Doom. But Doom, just Doom is there in the story, you know? This cloth was weird, you know? It looks like a freaking blanket. Like, you read, he's like, I have to hold on to the cloth for some reason. Kind of weird. But overall, he did... So the part and I did, he had one of the best scenes in the film, the killing scene where he's walk, he is walking, he kills everyone in front of him was intense, you know. And he also killed Alan Franklin, storing the father of Johnny and Sue, which was kind of intense. But I felt like he didn't need to die because they could, because he just walks up to Victor. He's like, Victor, stop! Don't do this evil. We can change. You can change. And Victor's like, nope, I'm a lost cause. Sorry, you all need to die. So are you all? You all lost cause. He just kills him like that. I didn't, I didn't think. Franklin needed to die. He could have just injured him, but then he would have died anyways if he went if they didn't kill him. Because then when Victor goes into the time the teleport, he leaves it open, which makes a black hole, which starts pulling the Earth chunks out of the ground and the planet 
pulling it into a vortex to no the negative zone and disintegrating anything that goes through it, which is kind of crazy, you know? Um, it's all, um, well, well, I didn't like that they didn't, they killed him overall, to Frank, you know? They could have had him, but then they, they killed him so he could be like, you, you all must not be fighting each other. You must be fighting the threat that can hurt this world. Protect it, you know? Because, because Franklin was always about, we need, uh, this world, what do we know about it? We don't know nothing about it. We need to discover more so we can protect it and nourish it. You know, he's, he's happy with the character who says he makes mistakes, but he doesn't want the next generation to make the same mistakes that he did. And I'm glad that he was a kind of a cool kid. He's kind of like um, like Kevin Costner of Man of Steel. He was kind of like that type of character put into this film. I did like that, you know, overall. Um, now I want to talk about the final act of this film. I didn't. I had mixed feelings about this uh, final act. Number one, I feel like the finale battle was way too short for the battle. I mean, they all they all try to go at uh, Doom separately. Like the thing goes at him first, he gets clock like he gets clustered, closed in by rocks. I mean, that's his own thing. And then Johnny tries to go at him second, throwing fireballs at him. He misses. He gets like uh, covered in rock shrapnel, holding him down. Sue gets covered in like uh, rocks that are trying to like not rocks, but his force field, his electrical abilities, like telekinesis abilities, trying to crush her, and then. Uh, he pulls Reed to suit apart so that uh, he can't control his stretching ability. She just falls on the floor. They all go out and then they're like, let's do this together. But it was done way too quickly. They should have had much more uh, substance to that battle so it could be a great epic battle, you know? It didn't feel long. Um, another thing I didn't like was that they changed the tone completely in the third act when that battle began. I mean, because I did like when, um, the, when the when the earth is being all parts of the earth like is being chunks of it being pulled into the vortex i like that part but i don't uh, i also like the part when uh reed and the others get pulled into the vortex and see you put a force when they go flying through the vortex i like that part because then you see like all the destruction that doom is bringing to him to the negative zone you know? i did like all that um but another thing i uh uh i did like that overall and then i feel like this is where the film kind of uh not falls apart but is messed up here is that this is, I felt like the studio sprinkled their footsteps all over this part of the film. Like you could tell by um, the uh, the the how the music is done, the, the dialogue in this. It felt really weird compared to how the first two acts were done. I mean, the first two acts were brilliant; they were well done there. And overall, I didn't like it overall. It felt way too short, and the tone overall was entirely different. It was a, it was the first two acts was kind of like a David Cronenberg horror movie, The Fly, you could say. And then in the third act, it felt like Aven the Avengers for some reason. Like it changed tones completely. It should have like slowly, progressively changed to that, and then mixing it both perfectly to the point of perfect symmetrical balance, you know? That could have been done, but they didn't do that. They just flipped it over entirely, and I blame the studio for that type of problem, you know? Overall, um, then, uh, I, I do, I, I'm really surprised that they killed Dr. Doom in this movie. I really am surprised that they killed him, because they kind of, like, killed him return for the sequel, you know? Because, like, um, he always returns with a bigger plan and a bigger problem, maybe, like, a new bomb or something like that. Now, I'm surprised that they killed him in this film. I really am surprised. I thought they were just, like, like, do something like what they did with the other two when they just froze him and, uh, like, um, they burned him, then they, well, wait, they burned him really hard to the hot, super heat of metal, and then they froze him with hot, with, with cold water. So he could stop moving, like, so he's, like, in some men. I did like that, like, in the first film. That was, like, the only few things I were fine with it. And then this film, they just killed him like that. They, like, they hit him, and then they knocked on the tower that was, he was making, like, the black hole. It, it, dis it disintegrated him, which was kind of cool how he got disintegrated, but I felt like that there was no more chance for a sequel for him overall. Like, they would have been more Doom. Like, it could have been a villain and Doom joined together to, like, cause the structure for the Fantastic Four. Um... Overall, the, the final act is kind of a mixed bag, in my opinion. Um, I did like uh, the end when he was like, well, when they try to figure out the name for themselves, they're making name of uh, plans like, well, let's name myself Human Torch and the Torchies, or like, or uh, like um, a guy on fire, an invisible girl, a stretchy guy, and a thing that no one wanted. Like they did those kind of names, it's kind of cool. And then he's like, and then Ben is like, this is kind of fantastic, and he's like, wait, what'd you say? It's kind of fantastic. He's like, wait, I got the name of the idea, the Fantastic Blank, and he got cut off. Which I don't like that. Why don't you just let him say it and then just end the film? Now, they did that with same thing with Avengers Age of Ultron when uh, Captain America becomes the, the captain of the new Avengers. He's like Avengers, and it just cuts them off. Which kind of sucks. I don't, I don't like, I don't know why they do that. Just let them, let them finish this sentence and then cut them off. All right. Um. So guys, 
I think that's all I gotta say for this film. I mean, visually, it, I gotta say, it does look impressive with the visual effects of CGI. The human torch looks great. All the visual effects of the action looks great. Uh, the thing looks great. Uh, when we read Cheetah's face, it looks great. I did like the practical effect of Dr. Doom. I, I don't like how everyone's saying he looks like garbage. He does not look garbage. He looks good. Alright? So, guys, that is... Wow, I chose a lot. That's my spoiler discussion for this film. And I must just say, I really am disappointed that they took a lot of scenes from the show. Uh, director Josh Frank also said that Fox took three action sequences from this film before it was finished filming. They took three, like, uh uh, you're not doing that sequence, you're not doing that sequence, you're not doing that action sequence. I think the action sequence would have made the film much more memorable, as it would have been more action sequences overall. Because there's only one big action se sequence, and that's with Doom at the end. I mean, there's not only the other action sequences, there's a chase sequence, but that's it. Where Reed is being chased by the government, and the thing just comes in and headbutts him, you know? That's it. That kind of felt like... There could have been more action, there could have been more feeling, but... This film has so much potential that... I want a sequel. I really do want a sequel for this film, you know. I, I there's hope for a sequel and I want one. You know, I want a Fantastic Four two. The one I don't want to see Fantastic Four two rise of the silver surfer though. I don't want to see that mess repeated again. So right guys, I just I'm just so mad at Fox for screwing this project over. You know, Fox, you don't fuck it up. I'm saying this again, you done fucked it up. You don't do, don't do this again. Don't do this for X Men Apocalypse. I bet they're never gonna do that because they trust Brian Singer so much. Just trust Josh Trank next time because you guys really did tarnish his name, Fox. You, you made him seem like he was the enemy of this film. I don't think Josh Trank is the enemy of this project at all. I just think that I think he's like the one of the best things of the film is that his direction and his vision is why the film is great in my opinion. Why everyone shits on this film. I don't understand you. I really don't. Alright? God, I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm thirsty. Get out my bottle, go. Right there. Sorry if you heard anything in the background that isn't me talking. Alright, guys. I had to try it for a second. Please like this video, comment below, and subscribe. Also, follow me on Facebook. And Twitter. My name on Facebook is Michael Martinez. My name on Twitter is the Michael in nineteen ninety seven. Uh, I'll be doing um, another video about the Fantastic Four. I'll be talking about what I think really are wrong with this film and what do I want in a sequel. And what I want in number two. You know, I'll be talking about that. Please, guys, uh, enjoy my videos. Watch my review. My if you did not see Fantastic Four, I recommend you do not watch this review unless you're planning to see it. If you're planning to see it, do not watch this. Unless you saw it already. If you already saw it, then enjoy it. Alright, I already told you guys. I'm putting a, a sign in the video. Spoiler. You already saw this, so... Doesn't really matter. Alright, guys? Please like the video, comment, subscribe. All that stuff. Already. I already told you this. And I'll see you guys... Yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys on the next episode of The Michael M. 1997. Alright, guys? See you guys. Bye-bye.